Hello there. My name is Taiwo Yedele, partner and Africa task leader at PwC. Today I'm going to be talking to you about how to navigate tax issues as a small business owner. First and foremost, I'd like to start by saying who actually is a small business owner. Based on available statistics, about 99% of businesses are small businesses. And actually, of the large businesses, about 99% of them started small. So chances are that if you are watching this, you'll find this conversation extremely useful for your own purpose, whether you're small or big. According to Benjamin Franklin, only debt and taxes are certain in life. In other words, we are going to die, whether we like it or not. In other words, we are going to pay taxes. So how do you then deal with something as inevitable as paying taxes? So I'm going to be sharing my top five tips with you today. Number one, you have to make a commitment to do the right thing. Uh, cutting corners will not last and it will not take you far especially if you're planning to grow your business scale and become a large organization in the near future you have to have a commitment to do the right thing including compliance with laws and regulations and paying taxes when the time comes and you want to gain access to finance to be able to grow a lot of investors will be interested in your corporate governance and they'll be looking at compliances like this, including taxation. So that commitment to do the right thing is important even if no one, nobody else is doing it. You have to be willing to do the right thing at all times. What you will find out in the course of our conversation is that in fact, it's a lot uh, more affordable, it's cheaper for you to do the right thing than to do the wrong thing. We have seen instances where small businesses that wanted to grow got to a point where because of lack of corporate governance and doing the right thing, nobody was willing to invest in their business. And I do think that you are not planning to run your business as subsistent entrepreneurship, uh, rather you want to grow and scale. We have seen instances, according to even PwC survey, uh, showing that one of the most difficult things for businesses to deal with is taxes. So tax compliance can be complicated, but having the right knowledge can help you. And that leads me to the second point. So my second point is you must seek knowledge and understanding. So once you have the right knowledge and understanding, it helps you to be able to manage and navigate the tax landscape, which sometimes can be difficult. Part of what you need to do with the understanding is to say to yourself, in dealing with my tax affairs, what should I do at what time and to which authorities? For example, do you know the taxes you are liable to pay as a small business owner? Do you know when those taxes should be paid? Do you know which authorities the taxes should be paid to? So this knowledge can save you a lot of stress. It can save you from paying penalties. Many of these penalties can be very high, actually. And you also have to, by gaining the understanding, you are no longer a candidate for extortion. So what we see is that uh, you know, non-state actors, sometimes even government officials, would approach you and because of your lack of understanding, they will extort you, they will inflate the amount you need to pay, you negotiate and you pay more than you should have paid if you were doing the right thing. So getting the right knowledge and understanding is extremely important. This you can do uh, by attending workshops, by attending seminars, by watching educational videos such as this, uh, by joining associations where they can share knowledge, and by following professionals and experts. Some of them share a lot of information freely on social media, online, and on websites. Number three, you need to plan your business and your task compliance. 
So now this is really important in terms of planning your business. Many people will jump into setting up a business just because a friend is doing it, just because they think that some people are doing it and they seem to be making a lot of money on social media. Um, planning your business actually starts from making a decision as to what type of legal entity should you uh, register. Is it a limited liability company? Is it an enterprise? Should it be a business name? Should it be a partnership? Now, this is important because not only would that affect your ability to grow, it would also affect your ability to navigate your tax matters. For example, there's a recent judgment uh, to do with a school. So the owner of the school registered the school as a limited liability company and of course was providing educational services and did not pay income taxes because based on the owner's understanding, educational institutions were exempted from tax until the tax authorities appeared and said, no, you should have been paying taxes. Of course, uh, there was a disagreement uh, which ended up uh, with the court. And the court ruled that because this school was registered as a limited liability company, it meant that the owners of the businesses set it up with the intention to make profits and distribute dividend, and therefore it could not be an exempted endeavor or activity. And they were asked to pay a lot of liabilities and taxes, including penalty and interest. So it's really important that you put a lot of thought into setting up the type of entity that you want for your business. Also bear in mind that based on the recent amendments to the Finance Act, um, as a small business now, if your turnover, that's your sales, if it's not more than 25 million in a year, you'll be able to enjoy exemption from charging VAT, which means on your goods and services, you don't need to charge VAT. It also means that when you make profits, you don't have to pay company's income tax. Uh, and in some cases, maybe the entity that is good for you is an enterprise. So you operate as an individual, you pay a lower rate of tax to the government, but you have to put a lot of thought into that. The same thing applies to planning your tax compliance. Like I said, it's sometimes, um, you know, people wrongly think that it's so expensive to comply with their tax obligations and then they are hiding. Hiding, unfortunately, is not a strategy. Even if you think it is, it is not sustainable. So what you need to do is to be honest with your affairs and plan. For example, um, if you want to do a promo and you say buy one and get one free, that has a lot of implication for tax compliance uh, because anything you give out for free for the taxman, it is not allowable for tax purposes, which means you pay tax on it. What if you had changed your narrative and you say buy two for the price of one? The customers will still patronize you because there's a promo and you don't get into any tax issues. As an individual as well, if you file your tax returns and you file it on time and you pay the tax you need to pay, you're entitled to a 1% bonus. This is part of tax planning. You also have to bear in mind uh, that if you, as an entrepreneur, running a small business, if you have a company for your small business, always pay yourself a salary it tends to work out well because when you pay yourself a salary you get a tax deduction for the salary you pay and then you pay a lower tax rate as your personal income tax if you have relatives and dependents who are working with you and supporting you in your business i try to pay them a salary as well so many of us we just pay them money from our pockets so when you pay them a salary, the advantage you get is you get a tax deduction for the salary you pay them. And if you pay them less than 30,000 Naira, they are also completely exempted from paying taxes themselves. So overall, you optimize your position without increasing your exposure and liability. Number 40, keep good records. Now, documentation is really important because uh, it helps you to have an idea of how you are running your business, whether you are even making profit. Uh, but it also helps you to save money in terms of tax compliance. Uh, for example, you would find that uh, many of us 
uh, we have vehicles that we use, uh, we have phones, uh, we have other expenses that we incur, but we don't collect the receipts. And when we collect, we don't keep them properly. So when you drive into a first station to buy petrol for your car, when you buy diesel for your generator, when you buy airtime credit for your phone, all of these are expenses for which you can get tax benefit by way of deduction. Deduction means you can use that amount to reduce the profits you have made before you pay tax on it. Um, I encourage uh, business owners to use payment cards for the purpose of making purchases because what that does is even if you don't collect the receipts, it will be in your bank statement. But of course, many of these uh, point of sales terminals will actually print a receipt for you. Uh, those receipts sometimes tend to fade over time, so you can take a picture of the receipt and put it on your phone. Uh, if you have a file, print it out and put inside the file. Uh, you would also find that keeping record uh, helps you a lot. Uh, in terms of when you need to gain access to more finance. Many of the initiatives that have been introduced by governments, including the Central Bank of Nigeria, require that people who want to assess those funding demonstrate uh, proper record keeping. So this is more important uh, for many reasons, even beyond uh, tax compliance uh, in terms of keeping records. My tip number five is on consulting and asking the right questions. Uh, there must be a reason why some people go to school and they spend four years, five years. Some people have been working and they have experience for 20 years. So if you want to build today, you will not go to your very good mechanic and ask them to build for you. The same way that if you are not feeling well, you will not ask your tailor to take care of you. There's a reason why professionals specialize and they have very useful knowledge and experience in their different areas. So if you're not a finance professional or you're not a tax expert, it makes a lot of sense to consult whenever you are in doubt. If you want to undertake any activities, talk to an expert to guide you as to how to do it. Um, if you want to sign a contract, including, for example, the rent, your office rent, you want to do an employment contract for your staff, you know, you want to sign a supply contract with a customer or a distributor, all these activities have tax implication. And as they say in law, ignorance is not an excuse. So you have to consult. The good thing is that a lot of the consultation you need to do are actually free. There's a lot of materials online that you can find, but make sure that you're getting it from a reliable source, not someone who claims to be an expert in something they've never done before. Maybe they just Googled and put something there. Now I'll try and summarize for you again um, my top five tips. Number one is you need a commitment to do the right thing regardless of whether everybody is doing the right thing or not. Number two is for you to seek knowledge and understanding. Number three, you need to plan your business and your compliance. Number four is documentation or what I call proper record keeping. And number five is to consult and ask questions and be willing to pay for professional advice. As painful as it may be, you will look back a few years down the line and you'll be grateful that you got the right professional opinion. I'll conclude by sharing a popular saying that I've tried to modify in a way to make it suitable to this conversation. And it is the saying that if you wish to go fast, you can cut corners. If you wish to go far, you have to do the right thing. If you must go fast and far, you must seek the right knowledge.